Tony. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, Bologna. And uh, I moved to Chicago 12 years ago to work for Barilla uh, America before I was working for Barilla Italy. And basically, you and I are uh, running this kitchen. In this kitchen, basically, we uh, uh, develop all the recipes that uh, you find uh, around the country for Barilla. So anything that is on the back of the box, on the website, on other websites like our partners like Amazon Fresh or Target, whoever uses our products and asks us to deliver recipes, we develop them. We also have a photo studio back there, so and, uh, and uh, so my role today is to cook a recipe about uh, you know keeping in mind the recipe builder, which I think you already heard about, right? They heard about it, but they uh, haven't really seen it. Ah, okay. Oh, so you, you haven't seen like, the I mean, created uh, uh, a team of Barilla created this really nice tool, basically that allows you to uh, uh, create uh, recipes that are 500 calories or lower, basically mix and matching ingredients. So you start with uh, an, oil, an oil of your choice or a fat of your choice, and then you flavor it with some flavor, it could be garlic or onion or whatever, and then you add uh, a vegetable or a protein and then or the other way around, and then you finish it up with an aromatic herb and a little bit of cheese. And if you follow the amounts that we recommend, you're gonna end up with a delicious recipe, um, usually done in about the same time that you're cooking your pasta for less than 500 calories per portion and very healthy. So that, that's the, the idea of it. It's like a mix and match tool and like it has uh, hundreds if not thousands of, uh, of combinations basically. There. The idea also of this recipe is that m most of them are very very quick and easy to make uh, besides being very healthy and under 500 calories. So I'm gonna start cooking my pasta right away uh, and uh, while I'm gonna create my recipe, so it's a casarese. Casarese has 10, 11 minutes cook time. Can you tell us a little bit about Colezione, that um, variety of pasta? Yeah, absolutely. So Colezione basically is a newer, relatively new line of pasta that we have launched, I guess, about two years ago. And uh, it's all the bronze dye uh, pastas. So, you know, pasta can be extruded in two different ways, either with a, a Teflon dye or a, a, a bronze dye. And bronze dye uh, basically provides a, a more of a resistance to the pasta when it goes through. Therefore, the pasta gets a little more rough on, uh, on the surface and, uh, and it has that kind of a feeling of a, more of a rustic type. I do two in the pan to start my recipe and then uh, I reserve the last, the, the rest for the last, to just to finish it. Because first of all, you know as much as I know that you know olive oil once you cook it you're gonna lose a lot of benefits, but also just the flavor from the flavor sample is so much better, so much fresh. So uh, I always uh, do that. Uh, I think it's a good trick to keep your recipe a little more tasty. And uh, usually, now I'm gonna go with garlic this time. Uh, the recipe builder calls for leeks or onions, other ingredients. Garlic requires just a little bit of cooking, but not much. But I do wanna kind of sweat it at the like medium heat, just because the raw garlic is like really pungent, very strong. So I'm gonna. Delicious uh, from California, and uh, I chose this recipe because uh, I feel it's kind of a little more unknown uh, in this country comparing pasta to beans. But if you think about it, around the world, it's a, it's a combination of legumes and, and, uh, and grains that sustain the entire population. If you think about uh, pita bread and hummus or black beans and rice. So, you know, you create that basically a, a, a good protein that sustains your body without using any meat, much more sustainable. So I really love this. And I first, when I first came to America, so roasted, uh, previously roasted um, uh, 
broccoli. Now, I could have done just regular raw broccoli they cook in a minute or two, but I like the char flavor too that they have. So how long did you roast the broccoli for? Uh, well, we have that machine over there, it's super fast. And it's <laughs> setting. Good fashion! Uh, but, you know, it, it has a fantastic setting that basically injects a little bit of steam while else so they don't get dry. With uh, a little oil on it? A little bit it? of oil, tiny bit, very little salt and pepper. Uh, but, uh, you know, you want to roast them at high temperature for a little time, not too long time. So I want to say three or four minutes. I don't know. My recommendation is if you can uh, do it, drain it a little bit undercooked, reserving some of the cooking water and then toss it in the sauce uh, for a few minutes so that basically you marry everything together and the pasta has that little time in the pan to, so that it's allowed to release a little bit of starch and then that emulsion of starch, water and a little bit of oil uh, creates that perfect combination that makes your pasta nice and creamy although you didn't put any cream on butter. Uh, so that's a, a a trick that I think is like more of a professional uh, uh, taking of pasta, that, but you, it makes a difference. Like a, a dente. So this pasta is really under right now. So, like I said, I'm gonna do a little bit of water, and I think it will need a little more than that. Let me see. Let a little bit of work. And now when you when you have the pasta basically let me move this so you can see a little bit better. Uh, when you have your pasta in the skillet at this point and your pasta is still undercooked, um, you want to have the water boiling hard, you know, you want to have the high like the heat to jack up to all the way up so that the pasta is not sitting in water and getting over uh, under overcooked or, or soggy or whatever. The process at this point should be really fast. And if you, let's say... People of Bologna prefer, uh, prefer historically, um, olive oil, uh, like just plain olive oil, because extra virgin olive oil is too strong for them. And so, I have respect for uh, people that feel that extra virgin olive oil has just too much to the rest. But for me, uh, you know, growing up with extra virgin olive oil is just the way to go. So, uh, the bottom is going to get a little bit thicker and uh, eventually it's going to kosher pasta because of the starch. So, that's m my goal right now is just to have the pasta releasing a little bit of that starch. But you, like again, you need to leave a little bit of the water in the sauce, otherwise you won't be able to create that nice emulsion to put everything together. So, in fact, right now I think we are good, and for some aromatic herbs, and um, you know, you, like again, uh, this one, this recipe I think could be really good with Italian parsley, or could be also good with fresh thyme. In this case, I'm using fresh basil. I'm just tearing it apart with my hands because I feel like it's the best way to get you know, the most out of it in terms of flavor. And then that olive oil that I reserved at the beginning, I'm gonna add it now with the pan hot, but not boiling. So that's very important because I wanna cook it. Let me give it a quick toss. And then when the temperature cools down a little bit, not too much, but a little bit, it's time to add your cheese. Uh, cheese, like you know, a cheese fondue, you don't wanna make it on a frying pan. It's gonna break apart, you have the protein on one side and the fat of the cheese on the other side. So just exactly the same concept in the pasta. When you add cheese, you wanna have, make sure that your sauce is not boiling and uh, you're adding the cheese, it will melt slowly and it will create a nice uh, creamy texture that you really crave on a good pasta. That's another thing I didn't talk about. Uh, something very important is also the ratio of pasta, water and salt. And uh, what we recommend is one gallon of water for a pound of pasta. 
Uh, so in other words, you need a good amount of water so that the pasta hydrates correctly. And uh, once you have the boiling water and you pour your pasta, water is good amount enough so that it gets back to boil quick. You don't want to have your pasta sitting on simmering water too long. And then salt, uh, we typically say seven grams of salt per liter, which translates to a tablespoon and a teaspoon per gallon. A little bit of of the texture there. Whole grain is definitely a more assertive type of flavor. Uh, the fiber gives a more texture. Uh, so I typically recommend braising your ingredients, uh, caramelizing. So in other words, you want to bring the most flavor out of your sauce and um, a little bit of texture. So if you have a, a sauce that is slightly chunky, it will hide a little bit the, the, the graininess of the pasta. It will add that, a lot of that. So don't pair your Alfredo sauce to whole grain. You take semolina pasta, which is a semolina pasta is made with the durum wheat. It's the traditional Italian pasta, and it can pretty much And go that's with... really the most flexible. You can use it any way you like, really. Right here we have our white fiber pasta. This is what, in terms of like nutrition, I'm like tiny steppers, I would say. So somebody who is afraid of whole grain because they don't like the color, they don't like it to a texture or taste, White fiber is a semolina pasta that has a small amount of whole grain. It has eight grams of, of whole grain per serving, so not a significant amount. It's like a pinch of whole grain in there, but it has a resistant starch added in to give it a fiber benefit. So it looks and feels like more or less semolina pasta, yeah. but it um, has six grams of fiber because of that resistant starch that's added to it. In terms of pairing and working with it, any tips? Um, once again, you need, it tends to dry uh, your sauce a little more than regular pasta. The fiber soaks up a little more moisture, so I would keep a sauce like a little more uh, moist and uh, not uh, like an olive oil strictly based sauce, or more of a tomato -y sauce. Okay, so get saucy with this. Um, then we have right here, we have our gluten-free pasta, which is made with a blend of corn and rice. Um, it was designed from an R&D perspective to function as close to a traditional Italian semolina pasta as possible. So we designed it to kind of be that replacement for somebody who needs to have gluten-free. In terms of working with it, you want to be careful on cooking time, I know? Yeah, well, the cooking time definitely is a little less uh, forgiving than traditional pasta, but it does pair very well with pretty much any sauce. Uh, the only thing is you can't reproduce pasta salads with this because once once it gets cold, it gets like really hard again uh, because of the nature of the uh, the resistant lack of starch blue. forms and it gets really hard. Right. So you either you could serve like a room temperature pasta salad. You cook your pasta, let it cool down to room temperature, and then toss it and serve it, but not a fridge cold pasta salad. Yeah, so we always recommend if somebody is celiac or gluten intolerant making the pasta salad to take to an event, we always tell them, make sure you pull it out of the fridge, let it come up to room temperature before serving because then it's a much better experience. If they actually eat it straight from the fridge, it's kind of like crunchy. Then we have colazione, which he are, um, Lorenzo already talked about being the bronze dye and pairs with uh, I mean, original uh, recipes, it pairs really well with pretty much anything. It pairs it's with not, anything, but the yeah. cuts, some of the Each cuts... Each cut is different, uh, so, it, uh, you know, when typically the general rule is that a long cut, it pairs better with a smoother olive oil-based sauce, the white shorter tubes pasta tend to per, uh, go better with chunks, chunky sauce, like vegetables or seafood. Or Plus is our... Awesome, Multi better view, multifunctional, really hard to mess up in terms of a culinary perspective, but awesome pasta. It is a multi-grain pasta that has a fiber, protein, and omega-3 benefit. It is mostly semolina, but it also has a blend of legumes, chickpea, egg white, flaxseed, um, lentils, all blended up and put into the pasta to get those that kind of triple benefit. In terms of pairing? It pairs really well with uh, pretty much everything. Um, once again, I wouldn't pair it to beans just because it's already made with beans, so I would rather keep it uh, you know, with something different. Uh, but it tend to, it's a very uh, resilient mm -hmm. pasta, so it cooks really well for pasta salads, but also um, it, it releases less starch than mm -hmm. traditional pasta. So like uh, a sauce that has naturally uh, some cream to it, not necessarily heavy cream, but like a creamy vegetables, a, uh, like a thicker sauce will pair much uh, better on this. Uh, I know we have a lot of positive um, feedback from food service. Um, 
using plus because it is forgiving that if they have to hold it for a long yeah. time or you know do batch cooking and recook it if they didn't do it as optimally as possible it's more forgiving yeah. so if you're timid in the kitchen you yeah. can't mess this one. We have out today is our veggie pasta so our veggie pastas are made with semolina um, semolina or durum wheat and made with 25% vegetable puree we have two varieties out out that one is zucchini and spinach puree and the other one is tomato and carrot in terms of pairing so it does pair pretty well. It's less uh, resilient, less forgiving than traditional pasta. Just pay a little more attention to the cooking procedure, uh, just because the addition of 25% of vegetable breaks a little bit the structure of the gluten of the pasta. So it, it does uh, have a little less resilience in the water. But again, not nothing very very noticeable, and uh, just pay a little more attention, and you'll be fine. But it does go really well with seafood and with uh, with veggie based sauce. All right. Hey, Melissa. Hi. Probably the only time you're gonna catch me doing this. Working hard. Working in that kitchen. We use the Collection Casa Reche. Casa Reche. And we had some no, not shallots. Sorry, onions, garlic, olive oil, of course, extra virgin olive oil. Lots of mushrooms. Lots of mushrooms. Kale. Um, that we got from the farmers market. Basil and chicken. Pecor I mean, pecorino, Romano grated cheese. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we picked orcati. So we picked the orcati because uh, we wanted to make a vegetarian dish with the white beans. And then the, so the little grooves in the pasta would catch the thick sauce and also capture the bean nice. in, in the little grooves. So um, we sauteed some shallot with some garlic, um, added in, added in uh, cherry tomatoes, let those flavors blend a bit and let the juices of the tomatoes come out. Then a little bit more garlic after that, so this one's pretty garlicky. Um, we had the white beans, and we didn't drain the white beans fully because we used some of the starch from the white beans to thicken the sauce along with the um, starchy pasta water. Um, and then it has a little bit of pecorino, mostly romano, a little pecorino at the end, <laughs> some basil, and parsley.